Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Two Times the Grind. We are on episode 36, so a 36 big ones deep, and we're still here for another week. We haven't bailed yet, which is amazing. We are on a live stream, so if you guys are listening on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, this has already been and gone, and we had an exceptional chat with everyone in Twitch chat who is going to be joining in. So hopefully some of you guys listening were in here talking to us, but if you weren't, then we're going to catch you up on everything right now. But Paige, happy birthday. Thank you very much. First and foremost. Thank you. 28 years old. Cheers to that. Got coffee. <laughs> we're not actually going to be rating coffees today, are we, Paige? No, we're not. He wanted a birthday treat. So we went and got a coffee and weirdy, we enjoyed it. Weirdy, we weirdy, rate, weirdy, it weirdy rated them too earlier, I think a couple episodes ago. So. Mm -hmm. We did. But today we're going to talk a little bit about anything really with Twitch chat. We've got a couple of bits to say about the 2K that's still ongoing, obviously, but the results that have been coming in. And then we also are just going to talk about what you guys want to know about us, about our life, about our careers. So make sure if you do have a burning question, let us know, chat. Um, gifted subs coming in as well. So apologies if we're going to be thanking people. Corey son, really thank you for sweet. the two. Appreciate you, homie. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Why <Wow>, cute. <laughs> I love it. But Peach, how how's your birthday going so far? Uh yeah, pretty good. Started off with uh with a, a fantastic coffee and now we're doing the podcast. So can't can't complain about it, can we? We can't ready play. ready to go. No, it's been uh it's been nice. It's still it's still early ish, so we got plenty of day left. But um, you know, just always always grateful. Always, always grateful. So What's for lunch? That's a great question. We've been th we've been tossing and turning about this one, haven't we? Yeah, we have. So we're we're trying to like eat clean a little bit and just have a healthier lifestyle for the majority. And this is the thing, you don't want your life to suck, right? Especially in terms of food. Like as humans, we're built to want nice food and to taste nice things and enjoy yourself, but everything in moderation. So like we eat clean for the majority and then special occasions or like once every week or like once every two weeks, depending on how we feel, we'll have like a cheat meal. Yeah. So today is all about him. So really, Paige, what is for lunch? I don't know. I'm so, I, I could, I'm just so torn. Uh, there, there's a, there's a big part of me that doesn't want to have anything too terrible because we've been on the grind and I don't want to like lose progress and stuff. And then yeah. there's the other part of me that just wants to absolutely crush a pizza. So... <laughs> <laughs> just, I wouldn't. I wouldn't it's mind. Just, it's just so <laughs> difficult. <laughs> I I wouldn't mind that, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but I I we both we do both cook, but I cook majority for the majority of the time. I cook, Verb. I'm the sh I'm the chef here. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> <laughs> not true. Really not is. true. Literally at all. <laughs> Everyone's saying get the pizza. I know. It's just, guys, we've been working so it's hard. It's a Domino's day. We've been working we? so hard. It's just, uh. I know. I know. Yeah, we have been. But this is the thing. It's the question is what? We're going to gym today anyway. We are. Middle. We are. So, like, we just go really hard in the gym, and then the food is used as fuel. Does that make sense, guys? You know what I mean? Like, you just use that food as fuel, right? Like, isn't that not how it works? <laughs> David said watermelon with mustard for the B day. <laughs> he would. Don't tempt him. He would. So go get that watermelon. Listen, the YouTube the YouTube section ain't ready for that conversation. Don't listen. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Don't, go, don't go down that rabbit hole. All right. Honking. Yeah, I don't really want your watermelon mustard breath on your birthday. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, carrots tried it. Carrots tried what? Uh, the car the carrots. The carrots. <laughs> carrots and mustard. <laughs> he tried. He tried watermelon and mustard. <sighs> what did you think, carrots? Was it good? Has anyone else tried watermelon and mustard combination before? It's PJ's guilty pleasure. <laughs> what I haven't had. I literally haven't had it since that day of us <laughs> of us testing it. By testing it, it was a TikTok challenge for the YouTube that's going to be judging me. TikTok challenge. It was. Just, was so it not? Young. It was literally a food like a. I don't know. I don't know what we call it a challenge, but I don't know. Whatever it was. We're so with it. Do you know what I mean? Like, we're not old. TikTok challenges? We're hip. Yeah. We're, we're so hip. hip. We're so hip. We have not. Jack of Hearts. Jack of Hearts, have you ever had an iced coffee from the Sonic drive-in? No, have we not. don't get Sonic here. 
We used to. We used to. Did you? Did we actually? Well, I think oh, we you were. You weren't here already. yet. Yeah, you weren't here yet. Obviously, but mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Oh no, six meatloaf, milk, mustard, watermelon smoothies. Oh no, 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 no. That's too far. <laughs> that is way too far. <laughs> What's my go-to meal to cook? Okay, if I honestly had to cook something that I know is going to be really delicious and like a crowd pleaser i would do like asian style like salmon and rice and seaweed and just bomb it's just delicious yeah really good because I, I have i have a lot of um i like off, off amazon if you guys probably know this if you guys cook there's a lot of um really really good uh asian ingredients on amazon that you can get so i always get like the real the real real the good stuff and it's amazing <laughs> Oh yeah, PJ's eating good. He's eating good. It's the the car Chef thing LVP. Trying to make healthy things taste delicious is really difficult. That is that is the difference. Without adding calories, you know. <laughs> Sounds about right. I like this. A little socks like, come on, get into it. We've got the Halo talk questions coming, and I love it. Yeah, jump into it. Jump into the two K. Yeah, jump yeah, into why not? yeah. Let's do it. Let's jump into it. Okay, so. A little sock asks, which, by the way, a cute little name. I like that. <laughs> uh, what is the reasoning for having day one of the tourney on Sunday and day two on, on Thursday from the organizer's POV? And what's the pros and cons of that from your POV, PJ? Peace and love to you both. Uh, peace and love to you. I'll just quickly talk about the first part. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> no clue. It's a very strange kind of way of doing it. Maybe it makes sense for... LVT because LVT do it. I I don't have it's any not association a, with LVT. I, I, don't so think, not, I don't think I don't think it's sure. an LVT thing at all. I think no? it's not because it's been it, it's been a thing. Is it a face it thing? Yeah, I think it's a face it thing. Okay. I could be wrong. I mean, you guys in the chat could obviously correct me or in the YouTube section, of course, um, mm. YouTube comment section, or if you tweet us from Spotify or Apple. Um, but I'm pretty sure for all the two Ks and uh, Pro Series stuff that we've done, they've they've done a lot on on Thursday. Um, pretty much always, and like LVP said, I have absolutely no idea why. I I am not entirely sure. I, pros and cons. I mean, I don't. I, it's kind of hard to answer because it's just, I view it the same. Like I think with majority of pros, at least on the top level, I think we're fortunate where it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, because this is our job and this is what we get to do full time. Um, but I think that's more of a question for like the community. And trying to trying to figure out like you know on if it's the right thing or wrong thing. Um, like I said, for us, I think it has little effect, but more so on the community. I'd be curious to see on how it impacts or how people feel. You know, obviously, the, some of the people who are going to be qualifying are still, you know, I'm sure in school and working jobs and everything. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's a question for the community more so than us. For for pros, I think it makes very little, very little difference either way. Um, staying I, staying uh, on that though, real quick. I just want to butt in. Yeah. Um, you know, because uh, a little sock says about pros and cons of that from your POV. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it uh, any kind of pro and con to not have the tournament almost like back to back the next day? Like, do you mentally kind of check out of it for the rest of the week and then have to like get back into kind of like tawny mode again? Like, or do you like the breaks? So you can kind of um. deep dive on what maybe went wrong the first day and have a little bit more time in between and a few more scrims or like, you know, what what's the vibe there? I'd say it's kind of, I'd say it's kind of both essentially. Like I think you can have really good, um, I, I feel like it's kind of both. Yeah, I feel like it's like a little bit of, um, it can be a pro in the sense that you, have a little bit of a break and you know i mean like lot lot obviously knows this because she's here with me 24 7 to where um you know lot sees kind of how exhausting the tournaments are like from my perspective obviously yeah. from a broadcast perspective but from my perspective like when i finish i'm like oh jesus like all right like time I, I gotta go like it's time to go to bed like gg you know and i'm ready to kind of wrap it up especially when it especially when it's saturday sunday um, I definitely think like, I definitely think that on the days that are, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I definitely think that the days that are like Sunday and Thursday, it's a little bit of less, it, it's less, uh, taxing. So I guess that would be a pro to having it split. 
Um, and then the con to having it split would probably be like, you know, it's just harder. I think it's a little bit harder to get back in the groove when you go from a Sunday, Thursday. Does that make sense? I don't know if I answered that like really no, great, sense. but. No, it definitely, it definitely makes sense. Yeah. I understand that. I'm going to come back to your uh, question verb, but just because I'm, it's kind of coming back to what we're talking about with Kodo asking as well. Um, how do you shut your head off at night after a tawny? Because I suppose like it kind of, that kind of bleeds into what you were talking about, but do you find it really difficult <coughs> to shut, you know, shut your, your mind a little bit after a tournament? I think I know the answer to this already because I see what you do after a tournament, yeah. which is he lies in bed with me and he is watching already the entire rebroadcast of his games with his teammates. Yeah. And, like looking at them, like literally until he falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I've never been good at like shutting down, uh, believe it or not. Like as I've gotten older, I guess I've gotten better at it. Um, but, you know, even hearing it from Lot, it's still not really uh, all that great of a shutdown from I, from I my perspective like not a good thing though because i think it might actually help you sleep yeah i think it's it back you know? i think it's both it's 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 a good thing because it's just the way i am it's the way i've always been um which has obviously done all right for myself or like led to okay for me in terms of my competition standpoint but um yeah you know i, I think it you know we've always talked about it there's pros and cons to everything and that's just the way I am. And, you know, I've, like I said, I've gotten better in the sense of I could shut down a little bit more than I used to, but still not, not as well as other people. Um, definitely. Yeah. Like what shirt, like what shirt says is like, it's like, it's, it's like a good thing, but a bad thing. If like shirt said he was watching VOD, VOD while we queued for rides at Universal, let it, <laughs> this is the level of dedication we're dealing with. Yeah. And I mean, like, yeah. that's just yeah. like, trust me, it's like, um, it's a good thing, uh, in the sense of competing, but, Obviously, there are parts of it that are, I don't, you know, whatever you want to call it. There are parts of it that are probably borderline unhealthy, but I, I am who I yeah, am. I think, you know? I think, I think uh, uh, when you get to the level that you have got to in something and you're continuing to try and match that level, I don't think there's anything wrong with being super passionate and wanting to work hard and to improve and all the constantly. Yeah. Um, but I think I, I do think like me being able to see on the sidelines of what does does happen, you know, after a tournament or in between a tournament, I do think you have a, a good balance of of being able to to get something done or to ease your mind on something, look at it and then stop. Yeah, I, I don't see you obsessing to the point where it's like, oh, gosh, <clears> like he needs to chill, like switch off, like do something else for a second. I think you have a really really like really good balance i think yeah well so i used to like not have that balance at all um and then obviously now like just has gotten older and even like us being together it's helped a lot with with it and just um you know it, it went from before i would obsess like you said like unhealth basically like unhealthy obsession to where now um we're looking at more of like like before I wouldn't go to Universal, you know, like before I wouldn't go to Universal, we would lose and I'd fly home and I would just be miserable for probably a couple of weeks. And then it's like, all right, back to it, back to the grind and just same old, same old where now, um, you know, I can go to Universal or like whatever, you know, and have a good time. And, and it's not the sole, it's not the sole focus. I still might be like VOD reviewing and watching stuff, but it's like, it's not ruining my life, you know, to where I'm not, does that make sense? Like it's not ruining. It makes sense. Yeah. So it's like, I, I still have it as this like big focus and it's still a big, you know, I'm watching VOD and going over stuff and vice versa, but I'm not necessarily having it take away like, and, and it's not like it did before, but just in the sense of it, it definitely in the past would, um, I don't know what the word would be. It's not hold me back or anything. It was just on my, it, it's still on my mind the same. I just have stopped allowing it to, um, I don't know, just stop my, just stop my everyday life, you know, as, well, this as is how I see it. Yeah. I think for you, it actually aids in the rest of enjoyment of life. Yeah. Actually, because, you know, like for example, using universal as an example, obviously things didn't go your way. So, for you to be able to then like come away from that event immediately yeah. with our friends and enjoy yourself, it's very difficult because it's on your mind. You're yeah. Like, damn, like we didn't do good. Like, damn, what did we, you know, what could we have done better? Like, all you want to do is go back to the drawing board and have a little look and, and see what else you can work out. But the fact that you can do that on the fly 
and then it almost eases your mind while we're there yeah like you're able to any questions that you might be having you're already like on your phone just looking at stuff while we're queuing in lines and like but then putting it away and joining no in exactly conversations. And yeah i feel like your mood switches because you're like okay i'm still like you're not feeling guilty that you're not 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 doing it bettering yourself yeah. you're having fun with friends but i think you d you know you do it both and <laughs> at the end of the day your friends are you know like we're out with the halo casters and talent and like we're all best mates and like they appreciate what you're doing they're not like looking at you like oh god he can't enjoy himself for a second like they they get it so. yeah it's just the best of both worlds where like i can decompress and um you know chill out a little bit but i'm also still very much being myself you know i'm not i'm not forcing it i'm i'm hanging out with people that i want to hang out with but then i'm also at the same time focused in a good way you know and i'm yeah. sure the majority you know i, I read in the I comments a lot of people like that is like immediately afterwards you know what i mean yeah like that is like the day after so it's it can be difficult you yeah know? and like i said i just my i mean like uh, George said in the chat, some of you have obviously known me a long time where it's like, I used to fly home. I'd be streaming by a Monday, you know, it's like, and it's like borderline, like not, it's just, it's just an obsession. It's just a health, it's a healthy, like not, it's not a bad obsession. It's just, you know, you just want to win and you're trying to improve. And, you know, for me, I've always just try to do everything and anything possible to continue to seek improvement. Um, still do it, just do it in a much better way now. Healthier yeah. Way. Healthier, yeah, healthier sure. way. Verb, I'm going to come back to your point. So Verb says, LVP, given the ups and downs of Halo, isn't it more financially stable for you to stay with COD? Any worries on your end with the future of the sport and when it relates to your job? Um, well, there's always worries in everything, honestly. Like, I think, especially for what I do, what we do, really, I know it's kind of different, but in a similar sense that we, we work for ourselves and, like, we have to go out there and make it happen um there's always going to be worry especially when your hands are kind of in the success sorry your career is in the success and in the hands of something that can easily kind of fall short or fall flat um I don't know I think the way that I look at it is trying to be as, as positive as I possibly can help where I possibly can um and like you know rather than kind of get upset or annoyed and, and there are times i'm sure like you know i don't ever let it leak through but in our personal lives there are times uh, isn't there you know when we're yeah, talking we're like absolutely oh, yeah absolutely and complaining and whatever but i try not to let that leak through and be a little bit more positive about it just so that i can help push forward rather than pull back um and you know if there's something that is that can be fixed or there is some feedback that can help um and it gets heard then that's always a win for me. Um, but I, I do think like COD and Halo can be very similar in the sense of like risk, uh, especially for my, my job. Um, but I wouldn't say one is more than the other. Um, I would say it's more so like, I think the health of the Halo competition is great. The viewership is really, really good. And a lot of people like talk about the viewership and they're like, oh, COD's getting more. Actually, Halo is doing great. Like it really is. It's doing really, really good. Um, like the the actual competitive side yeah i think is really keeping the game where like afloat and and is doing wonders for it so yeah i, I don't know it's it's a little bit it's a different kind of category they're both in but I, I wouldn't say there's more risk in one than the other yeah yeah it's hard i think it's always a difficult thing with esports where you know you only have so much control at the end of the day of what we do what we do and how the esport progresses and how the scene progresses like i've always found that to be a very um challenging side of gaming and esports where you know for for you it's broadcast talent for for me it's playing where you just don't you know it's like i say you just don't you don't get to control your outcome always you know and, and in this case yeah. we're talking about the scene itself um but yeah it's like you said you just you just kind of kind of got to I figure it out, but you know, just go with it. Yeah, you just weigh up the best thing and, and the options. And for me, like, I've loved Halo for a very, very long time. It's hard for me because I, I love COD as well. So I don't think at any point in time was it more like when I changed from COD to Halo, was it a financial decision like that? And I've told this to many people. I told this to COD. I told this to Halo. This is a personal decision. Um, going to Halo was yeah. a very big personal decision. It made our life um so much easier um 
it, it's made us a lot happier uh, just because we get to travel together we get to actually be together um and it yeah it just helps uh our actual irl everyday personal lives so that for me was like a big thing and you know i always want to be able to make money and to you know get stuff have it as a career and yeah kind of have have like that financial security when we have kids and that kind of thing so like that's always you know there in in my mind but um at the moment it seems to be that following my passion and doing what i love and striving to be really good at what i do um clearly is working in some way mm. shape or form so I'm, I'm happy with where i'm at um i think verb had another really good point just coming back to like the obsession the obsession talk yeah um verb said when did it become obsessive you know when when the big <clears throat> money came into halo 5 because back in the day h3 there was you know barely anyone practiced for events it was a very different world which we actually talked about on the last podcast i believe like yeah. how different things were for scrims even yeah so <laughs> when did that obsession actually set in for you do you think yeah i'd say halo 5 um 2016 obviously being kind of the start it really wasn't a lot to do with the money like obviously that's when it became like a full-time thing for pretty much everybody um verb kind of mentioned it like in the past it was like no one was really practicing for events the way they practice nowadays um you know gaming is developed the scene is developed you're now able to have this as your full-time job, which gives you kind of no excuse to, um, you know, gives you basically no excuse to like not be practicing. Um, I would just say, I would just say Halo 5 and obviously being full-time is part of the reason, but the big part of the reason was, um, I don't know, I just think I got older. Um, and I, I, I talked to you about it. I, I saw like a video that changed my perspective a lot and it was just a video um, basically talking about how you know, like, I'm going to, like, sum it up here because it's too long to explain. It's actually not that long to explain. Basically, like, going on about how, like, the majority, a lot of people will say that they want something. And in this case, it's it's success and it's, you know, to win. Um, but the reality of it is most people don't actually do what is required to achieve that. And honestly, like, after seeing that, I, it, like, really hit me. Like, I was one of those people. Like, I was, like, I was one of those people that would, like just be like, oh man, I just want to win so bad. But like, I wasn't actually doing a lot of the things that lead towards that or like not lead towards it, but help push it, help further it. Um, and that's when it became like obsessive for me in terms of like, it just changed my perspective a lot, like a lot, a lot. And uh, I realized I needed to be doing more and attempting to do more and kind of ever since then. Yeah. Just ever since then, I it just was like, man, like, you know, I need to, to just try to keep figuring this out and do everything I can to help achieve, um, you know, our team goals and my personal goals. So yeah, 2016 would be when it changed. It was a little to do with the money. It was a lot to do with just me as a person and realizing, um, realizing I was just not, I just wasn't being the competitor I wanted to be is the easiest way to explain it. Yeah. Would you say that you mentally, would you say that you're happy with where you are as in terms of balance of, obsession passion wanting to improve i know things can be really difficult with halo infinite and yeah. how certain pros feel about certain things and i say that because i don't want to put words in your mouth or anyone else's mouth but just in general i know that there is a lot of things that people want to see improvements on let's just put it, yeah. put it that way um but that aside you know you personally and your actual growth as a individual player and a teammate are you happy with where you're at yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm really happy. I think overall, I've just I've gotten better um, as I've gotten older, and especially as like a teammate and just perspective and all kinds of things like that. So um, happy in that regard. Uh, you know, when it comes to the game stuff, it's difficult because I'm always going to be frustrated at the things I wish we had or I wish were better. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely overall. I feel really good about like where my game's at. I feel good about the mindset, our mindset. You know, our ours being our teams. Um, so yeah, just, you know, just trying to keep, you know, it's always about progressing forward. Just trying to keep progressing forward yeah. every day. Every day we practice. I think, I think you do a great job. I like keeping everything together. Yeah. Because, you know, what you do, Thank you. A, lot, a lot of people kind <laughs> of see it as like a um, blessing, which it is. It is a blessing. Don't get me wrong. But I think a lot of people see it as almost like, well, <laughs> you play video games for a living. Like, how could you be sad? How could you be annoyed like, about it or sad? But yeah. The, the problem is. The, the key word, the buzzword is you do it for a living. Yeah. Right? It's like, 
It's like anything that you do for a living, anything that you put the rest of your life risking, the rest of your life financially, happy, happiness, anything like thinking about future children and yeah. future, whatever, whatever it is, uh, your security, it, it does become something that is hard to handle no matter what you do for a living. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I could, I could jump in bouncy castles for a living. <laughs> <laughs> and something would be something might be annoying yeah. or something might be difficult or whatever it yeah. is you know but yeah i think th i think there's a lot of people who don't really appreciate uh how difficult it can be sometimes uh, but i think i think you're amazing so thanks baby I'm we so, so we, we talk about all the time where um yeah. you know i almost feel like guilty to a sense of like when i do complain i'm like I hate that I'm complaining. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, I, how, I ma how many times have I said, it. I know how many times have I said that to you where I'm like, man, like I literally hate that like I'm complaining every, every about, time. yeah. I'm like, it's this, I'm like, it's so annoying that I'm even like being this way, you know? And it's like, but it, it's like we said, like, you know, a lot summed it up perfectly where it's like, if you care, I just think when you care and you have passion and you, you want something really bad, I think it's, I think it's very, very difficult to not, um, yeah, just, you know, just find that in that in between of frustration to perfection, you know? It, yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, uh, Digo187 said, this is like low key couples therapy. <laughs> um, but not really for us. I mean, it's, I, I suppose it's therapy for Halo Infinite. <laughs> Ther know, but not for us. Yeah. It's, it's like, I, I don't need therapy. I, I can't get enough of you. Yeah. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like honestly like <laughs> being apart on this side of the room sucks yeah, like, I, I miss know. you <laughs> um but yeah no we it, it might sound for people who don't know who we are by the way and you are tuning in for the first time whether it's on youtube and you're watching this back or you're with us live um pj is a professional halo player if you've just found the podcast he has two world championship titles and multiple multiple event wins he's a very successful halo player and is hoping to be even more successful by the end of this year. I am the host of Halo. Uh, my name is Lottie. We are also engaged, so we're gonna be married next year. Um, and the whole point of the podcast is to talk about our lives kind of, you know, navigating yeah. the fact that we do something very similar, but also something extremely different. Mm. So we're in the same realm, the same universe, the same world career-wise, um, but just basically on different planets in that universe. So it's like how we navigate that together as a couple. Uh, I personally think it brings us way closer. I think it, so it too. It brings us closer as a couple. I think um, you definitely challenge me to be a better host. I think I challenge you to be a better player. Because Absolutely. Because we go over all of your games. We talk yeah. about your scrims. We really like dive into stuff. Um, and then also, I just think we have a good... I think we have a good like balance of knowing when not to overstep. Like yeah. I've never questioned something you did in a scrim. Like yeah. I might ask you about it, but I would never be like, that was shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I would never do that. And plus nothing you do is shit. Ah, the whole the whole point you know Yeah, the whole point of us uh <laughs> starting the podcast is because we just talked about esports all the time together and talked about Halo and Call of Duty and just everything to do with the scene. Um and we were like this would be really, really cool to uh just share like just share our discussions. And uh, I think that's been a big joy for us is honestly like talking about it more publicly to where people actually get to join in now um and yeah like lot said like it, it's just funny because uh we i mean you know you know how i feel about you i know how you feel about me um but it's just funny because like we well, do you know oh well, i mean i hope you do I'm i joking, hope you I do. do i love you um, so much. <laughs> i love i love you Ava, thank you for the five homie um but uh it's funny because like you know someone's saying the the therapy thing or whatever it's like or therapy is in like you know all oh, like we're just talking through the games and the scene and everything but um you know yeah we just we just love talking about esports e and gaming and we more importantly we love talking about it together so yeah we do it's been we, uh, it's, really it's like literally it's like the highlight of my week every time we get to talk and i mean talk about on stream or on podcast but you know we talk more than just the podcast so. <laughs> yeah um, I'm quickly going back to, because I don't want to miss any questions that are asked. Astros 22 says, if the opportunity became available to work as a broadcast talent, I like that question. sport, football, baseball, et cetera, would you leave esports? Now, this is a really interesting one because my background actually is in traditional sports. So I started off as a 
journalist and then kind of worked my way into broadcasting uh, for the BBC in the UK, uh, which is basically the traditional sports channel in the UK. And I just, I, I'm <laughs> from a traditional sport background, so I thought I was going to love it, but there was something about it. I just, the passion wasn't there. Mm. The second I started eSports, it was like a completely different feeling. I can't really describe it other than like, I just felt so motivated and happy and excited to work. Um, whereas before I felt like it was a little bit more of a chore and it was a bit more difficult mm. at the time, definitely more competitive. Um, <clears throat> you know, it was, it was difficult because I, I was really young too. So I don't think people took me very seriously, even though I wanted to be super serious. Um, but in gaming, I just felt like an opportunity was given to me and I just took it by the neck, choke hold, <laughs> got in there, you know? Um, but I, I don't think I would, no. I don't think I would leave esports. I don't think I could now. I love it too much. I really mm. do. I really, really do. Uh, LBP, come work for the PGA Tour Live and SB, we can play TPC Sawgrass. All I, the might, time. I, might force, I might force you at that point. I'd be like, wow, you're t listen, I'm, I love you. If you love me, you're going to take this job. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I've really got into watching golf. So, I don't know. Exactly. But as long as I could do it alongside, yeah. I don't think I could. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't leave esports. I couldn't do it. I love it too much. Um, forced to change. Lottie, you are... Oh, this is too nice. I don't know if I can read this. <laughs> you are such a great and professional host of all of the events I've seen. Thank you very much, firstly. That's very sweet. Is it difficult slash how difficult is it to maintain your professionalism, particularly when PJ's in a game or on the team that is being discussed at the desk? Um, it's a good question. And I get actually asked this quite a lot. So it's not hard during the actual live broadcast. I know that sounds really silly, but while, while I'm up there and while we're live and the cameras are rolling, it's not difficult at all. My brain completely switches into analytical mode, halo mode. This is your job. This is, you know, you are a host. Like, I don't even think about it for a second. Um, the second the lights dim and the cameras are off, very different story. Yeah. Like, as if I'm not even a host anymore. Mm. Uh, that's when I let my emotions kind of run and flood back into my brain. Um, like, for example, at Worlds, um, when PJ's team lost and had a pretty disappointing result sorry babe it's okay um i felt overwhelmingly emotional like insane like i had to crawl behind the desk <laughs> hold hold my tear ducts <laughs> and like breathe mm, and sorry just, like, sorry in my babe. Head, say like it's gonna be okay they're not dead <laughs> they're fine like they're alive there's always next year don't worry about it like it's gonna be okay because i was just sad for him yeah. i was just really sad for him or sad for his team um, it was a really disappointing result, and I felt really emotional in that moment. And I had probably about two minutes, sub two minutes, to pull it together yeah. before it was coming to me. So they're doing an interview on the stage. I'm like this, <laughs> like, please, like, hurry up, like, you can do this. Come on. So I stood up, put my headset on. My um, producer, who is absolutely amazing, her name's Crystal. She said, "You got this." breathe you're fine and as soon as i heard that i was like I, yeah i'm fine and it literally looked like nothing had happened like it, like i literally just went well who who, who was it ssg right SSG, uh, that we, yeah say? yeah for yeah. the losers yeah i said well a little bit of news on these side stations ssg just knocked sentinels out of the tournament i'm like wow no, we're, SSG, we're, we're, on, we're on main were you on main yeah yeah, main? yeah we're on main. okay oh the one before that was side right that you lost them first you're thinking of Orlando, yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of Orlando. Yeah, yeah. Orlando, yeah, anyway, Orlando we lost to them. Anyway, I had to basically yeah. announce it to the broadcast. And yeah. Yeah. At, or, was, at Orlando, you had to say it. Was it was rough. Yeah. But I basically just had to switch my brain back very quickly to that analytical, say what you see, say your knowledge. It's going to be fine. Leave the emotions for later. Yeah. And that's what I did. Uh, it was really rough. You do a great job. That was the it. only time I've ever felt like <coughs> it could ever bleed in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's when I felt like, oh, I really am just human. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a superhero. Like, I don't <sighs> know how I'm going to do this, but I did it. And I'm I, honestly, I'm really proud of myself. Like, I don't ever get proud of myself with work, but I was really proud of that moment for, like, just, you know, dialing it back in again. It was really difficult. Uh, but I'm clearly made of some strong shit to do that you are because it was it was rough it was really rough but thank you for your question and so majority of the time 
it's okay. I don't mind it, and it's. I think I think I think you're amazing. I think you're amazing at it. That is very sweet of you. I appreciate it. You I do. You do a great. It. You do a great job of. Uh, you know, like you said, just keeping it, keeping about the game and yeah. analyzing. And I've, I've always, I've, yeah, exactly. It is, it, it is. I, I was a host before I even met you. Yeah. You know, I, met, I actually met PJ, for people who don't know, interviewing him. Yep. Like, I literally walked into a room. He walked in. Shout, out my, like, shout out my team refusing to do interviews. <laughs> yeah, because PJ had to do it. <laughs> and we sat face to face and I was thinking in my head, damn, this guy's cute. And he asked <laughs> how my day was and no one else did. Um, Lesson for you. Lesson for you all. Yeah, ask a girl how their day is. <laughs> ask, be nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she, uh, uh, she, he. <laughs> I was just reading chat. It's okay. Um, yeah, he. Uh, he's not that difficult to talk about from an analytical sense and his team, but emotional can get pretty difficult. Can yeah, get pretty tough, especially at Worlds. Worlds is such a you know, in high intensity event. It's the last one. It's the one where teams are like, right, we can do it. You know, worlds um, is. I think worlds is just the one know? where it hits the most because oh, yeah. the whole year is leading up to that moment. And you know, I, and from Lot's perspective too. I mean, she just sees it. It's like twelve hour days um, every day for the month before. Um, so you know, obviously, when you care about someone, you know, luckily she loves me. Um, and you know, you just, you just see that perspective of like how bad, you know, I mean like in this case it's how bad we want to win, but the reality is how bad everybody wants to win. Everyone is putting in insane, insane amount of work and, um, all their loved ones are going to essentially feel somewhat of the same, the same pain. Yeah. There's only going to be four, four or five people who their, their significant others, their friends, family, you know, whatever, don't experience that, if that makes sense. Um, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I got to say the emotional side of it for me. I really couldn't do it without the my best friends. Yeah. Who, are, who luckily, very luckily, which makes my job even better, I work with um for Halo. So literally all of all of us best mates. Um and without them, I I think it would be a lot harder for moments mm. like that because they literally lift me up and make me feel so, I don't know, supported in that sense. Like they're just like, "It's all right, lot. Don't worry about it." <laughs> like you know how good they are don't worry <laughs> and i'm like i do but that was rough um but yeah they're amazing and shirzy who's in the chat right now who shares we love you mate we do we absolutely love you and shirzy being you know fairly new ish to the hcs broadcast i mean not really but like he has definitely had the spotlight that he deserves because he's absolutely incredible at casting and what he does one of the funniest guys i know one of the wittiest, fastest guys I know. Um, so if you guys don't know who Shirzy is, make sure you go follow him. They know who Shirz is. No, but I'm saying for any, any like, <laughs> dude, if I just had to introduce myself to anyone who's I know, new, that's true, that's I'm fair. I'm introducing Shirzy. That's, uh, yeah, that's fair. This is our podcast, that's I'm introducing fair. us. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's very fair. Of course, most people know who he is, but <sighs> if you don't know, he's a fantastic uh, Halo caster uh, and a dear, dear friend of ours. He's amazing. Um, but yeah, so anyway, after all that story, uh, I'm excited. I am very excited about your season, this season, Peach. I yeah. think you guys are on a really, really great track at the moment. You're doing really, really well. Um, I feel like what's, what I really like about your team at the moment is the fact that you guys are still striving to be better. Yeah. I, I, I think that sounds a bit silly, but because like, why wouldn't you? But I just think there's an element of always wanting to improve. Like you win a scrim quite handedly yeah like say you win a 10-2 scrim like i hear the vod review happening yeah and i'm like did they lose <laughs> <laughs> like i like go check the stats i'm like no no they did not yeah you know, not even close to losing um but that like element of like always wanting to be better is absolutely amazing do you think that's something that sets your team apart from i wouldn't say like any of the other top teams because i think a lot of other top teams are kind of similar yeah but like teams who really from the top four like that separation that line would you say that that's something that separates you guys in terms of the perfectionism that um, you guys have oh no i don't know i mean it's hard to answer without you know i always say this without knowing what other teams are talking about you know it's hard to specifically know um i'm sure it is slightly you know i think i think all the top teams are probably a little bit more particular and a little bit more obsessive um, than maybe a lower seeded team would typically be. Um, 
you know, it's just something that's kind of, we already talked about the mindset perspective of it. Um, you know, I'm really fortunate with our team, um, all having the same mindset. You know, I've been on teams in the past, not, not our CLG optic talk team, but I'm talking about like when I was coming up into the gaming scene where it was really hard to have people of, uh, like, like-minded, essentially, like-minded and seeking that improvement and, and you know, uh, basically since 2016, like, I think I literally said the exact same thing on, the, on the, our last podcast, where luckily since 2016, um, I've just had that the whole way through. And I'll, I'll always really appreciate that because it's, it, it's a stressful, it's a stressful thing to, to try to accomplish of winning and, you know, being at the top and especially trying to have longevity at the top. And, you know, if you, if you feel like you're on your own to try to improve, it's just always going to be... It's going to be a long road, you know, it's going to be a Very long true. road. Yeah. Kind of on the same, you know, side of the coin here, uh, avocados asked question for snake bite. Are there any new perspectives that you're taking with another new year <clears> to do about this could be esports and gaming related or just like general stuff? Um, new perspective this year. Uh, I don't, not really like in terms of like the gaming side of it, it's kind of the same old, same old, I feel like, um doing the same vod review with the same practice and you know everything um i don't think i don't think i have any like new perspective as as bad as it might be i i i've had new perspective in the sense of like when i kind of was like okay i think we're gonna have to make a team change i definitely had um big perspective on how fortunate we were if that if, if that can make any sense where you know with how long we got to team with tj like it sucked you know it sucked not teaming with someone who you know i loved i love Tej and you know to be teammates for so long like i don't think we ever really took it for granted so i think we're like fortunate in that sense but um yeah you know it's i, I think if anything it just it made me kind of have a little bit more of the perspective of like you know make sure you enjoy as cliche as it is like enjoy the good days you know while while we still have them and the memories while you could still make them um a little bit of a cliche but i definitely think that hit home a little bit more than times past you know is that is, i don't know is that too cliche no i don't think it's too cliche no yeah i think i think it's uh i think it's a really good mindset yeah i think i think i think your new thing is going to be having a really good mindset like, yeah continuously yeah and just trying to just trying to appreciate like how good we are like you know it's the same thing we talked about with being obsessive and wanting to win so bad and like just not having that perspective of you know almost like enjoying it you know what i mean like it's like wow we're really good but then there are times of it where i i just wouldn't say i not like made the most of it but just didn't you know i, I just didn't have moments where i was um having that realization of like you know we team, you know, with like with TJ, we teamed for seven years and had success the whole way through. It's, I, I I've always said that. I don't know if you'll find another team in esports that's really kind of ever done that. So yeah, just that perspective I think is the thing that I'm carrying with me, um, this year, this year, and probably yeah. probably for the rest of my life. You know, um, Gelato Jin J, when do you think you really became a pro player, not just a really good one? Not just a really good player. I'm not entirely sure. When do you what? think? Let me find the exactly. question. Let me read. Uh, oh, when do you think you really became a pro player, not, not just, just a really a good, good one? Yeah, like so. When do you think you became a pro player, not just a uh, like a good player? A really good player. Um, yeah. Honestly, uh, I'd probably say like 2009, around the time I went pro. Um, 2008, 2009 is when I kind of had like my breakout. Um, I was really good. And I mean, I was, it's hard. It's, this is a harder question for me because I was so young anyway. So like I was really good. I was, I was 11 when I started competing. So by the age of 13, I basically was like, okay, I'm good enough to go pro. Um, really, I had that moment of realization within my first event. So I was, I'm a little bit of an outlier of feeling um, very fortunate to be able to say that. But yeah, I'd say, I'd say it took me, you know, a, a year or two of, a year or two of, placing in the realm of pro to then be like okay now i'm i'm like i'm good enough to be pro you know um yeah definitely all right so this is quite an interesting question forced to change sn snake bite how often do you check in with lvp when you're at lan and do you feel like you ever hold back stresses you have from a series particularly if lvp has to return to the desk for the analysis if that's what happened 
I mean, we check, I mean, we talk all the time at events. Um, so check in pretty frequently. <laughs> I mean, you know, she's working, I'm working. So when she has time, she'll come find me. When I have time, I go find you for the most well, part. I'm, right. I'm usually on the desk, like for 12 hours. A day. Yeah. But whenever I go to the loo, I'll, I often sprint, so I often like really get in, like a jig on, you know, like a real move. So I'm like move, 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 moving. And as I go backstage, I'm always scanning the warm up station. And if I see them, I'll just when I run over, yeah. like, give you a massive kiss, go, I love you so much. Like, yeah. Go get them. Who are you playing? Blah blah yeah. blah. And then like I'll run to the loo, and then I'll run back, and I'll I'll usually give you another little wink or something as I'm going back. Yeah. I, I I literally have two seconds like, yeah those, pee, yeah those peas are like honestly like i could be awarded for like the fastest yeah pee. you're in and out you're like gonna. honestly my pelvic floor muscles are insane cause I'm just like, <laughs> go hurry like, i literally have no time sometimes if i have to go to the toilet like i'll come back and I have 30 seconds and i'm like okay here we go yeah all right like i'm out of breath like i'm running so yeah, it's it's nice to like, we'll so, just see each other, and I'll just give him a quick kiss, like to be like, you know, come on. It's so go. funny because people have no idea, like you know, people have no idea that like you're like just <laughs> fucking sprinting to make it oh, back and forth. Like it's so funny. I know. There's been like oh. I think there's been a time where I've like run back, and um, like I've been next to Clutch, and Clutch was like, yeah, you have toilet paper on your shoe, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> 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 I'm like, okay, well at least no one can see that. <sighs> but, um, you know. to answer the the end part of the question, I think yeah. it was. Um, do you ever like hold back response. stresses? No, I don't. Lots, lots of pro. Lot knows what you know. Like, lot knows like, you know. It's one of the things that you're just amazing. With. I mean, you're just a total pro. You know what you can and should or should not say and whatever. So like, I get to speak every day when we're like anytime we're talking about stuff. Like, I get to speak very like, um, what would be the word like candidly of how I feel and what I think is going on yeah, and and, and I know it it, it always. If it's anything important, it stays between us. You know what I mean? In the in the sense of like, it's never going to be something like bad that Lot is going to bring to the desk or you know anything like that. So no, I I don't I don't hold yeah. back. I don't hold back at all. All the only the only sense of I would hold back would be like if it's like something minor. Like you know she's working. Like if it's something minor in terms of like oh I was going to complain. I don't know. I'm going to complain about my audio, you know, or something like that. Like, I don't complain about that. I'm just like lots. She's busy. She's working. She's doing her thing. Like, I'm not going to complain about something. Which I wouldn't mind. No, I know yeah, you. Yeah. I know oh, you. Okay. I know you wouldn't. But it's just in the sense of like, you're working. Like, you don't need to hear me freaking complaining about my audio for a series. You know what I mean? Just like small stuff like that. Like, I'll hold back stuff like that. But when it comes to when it comes to like our series and our game or anything like that, like, no, nah, I just I get to I'm very, very fortunate where I get to speak super open um you know lot knows it's the same for her where if she's yeah. talking oh, to me always. yeah like if you're talking about broadcasts or you know whatever it might be like lot gets to talk to me and like that will always just stay between us it doesn't i don't talk to my team about our conversations and you know vice versa so um very fortunate very very fortunate yeah so forgive us guys i'm continuously scrolling to yeah to, same uh, what we've missed there's quite a few flooding in at the moment so I'm gonna try and catch Any up questions for LVP, by the way? You guys are asking me loads of gaming like, questions. Like, we, answered a, questions. we answered a couple questions. We answered a couple questions. questions. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Uh, look, look at this one. Tied to go. This question can be for both of you. All guys. right, there, there, we go. Go. there we go. Um, and they've been asking me questions. Yeah, that's but, true. You know, a lot of this is like I. Part of my job is to talk about you. So. Oh, Kazi asked one for both of us right. too. So make sure we don't um, don't miss out on Kazi. Tied to go says, uh, "Do you miss the weekly style of professional league play that was in H5?" especially when looking at the broadcasting exposure and playing mini tournaments in between large majors. Yes, I do. I hate, I, I, I don't want to say I hate it because hate is an extreme word. I think pro, I get more hyped for pro league and pro matches and so, and that kind of thing way more than, um, way more than, uh, the weekly tournaments and, and all that. And it's not, it's not a uh, negative to the tournaments. I just think the tournaments are a bit, I just think they're a bit much of like every week, like crowning a winner. I just don't, I think it takes, I think, and this is only my perspective. I think it also takes away from the perspective of like a LAN event. I think like the LAN events are meant to be like super hyped, like matchups and, and with the every week tournament thing that we kind of have going on, I just, I just don't feel necessarily the same, you know? Yeah. I gotta say, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to be careful with like how I word this and, and what I say here, but I, I definitely do miss it. And I think it's fair to say that I 
I mean, personally, from my my point of view, like I'm going stir crazy over here. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm right. Shirzy, Shirzy can relate to this without question. Like, I want to work. I miss it. I I literally watch every single 4K, 2K, any qualifiers, qualifiers for the qualifiers, and like I'm just there, just gasping. Like I, w- yeah. I want to work. I want to do it again. I miss it. Uh, I do think the format though of that H5 period was amazing. Like you said, Peach. Like I do think it vamps up the lands and yeah. it means more to the major wins um and i do think that's amazing i i also think though from another perspective um i do think that it's cool to i think from the other side to yeah. have winners um because the prize money is obviously there and then for any teams who are trying to kind of prove themselves like being able to get like a really really good placement yeah. in any of the qualifiers or the 4ks or the 2ks um, for example, complexity, you know, like, you know, teams who are looking to prove themselves. Uh, it's cool that they also like get paid with that uh, as well as kind of proving what they can do. Mm. Uh, but I do think that could equally come with a pro league type of format. My ideal, well. my ideal format would be like a mix of both. And, and I don't know how, yeah. how you would necessarily do it, but I would, you know, like I, that, that's what I would do. I would do like a pro league mixed in with... Um, mixed in with like some kind of online tournament like similar to how we have like the quadrant tournament and the phase tournament and stuff like that i think i think like if you did pro league and then followed with it's just like my hypothetical of ideal formats like do a pro league followed by um the phase 4k and it's like i think stuff like that i think that would be the ideal uh format for for our game specifically but uh real quick just so yeah sorry to everyone listening on youtube shifted thank you for the 20 bomb uh thank you guys for all the birthday messages bomb. we are seeing in the Ooh. chat woden aka odin my man thank you for the five appreciate you we'll, we'll we'll cut back to the podcast but i didn't want to go too long without saying uh saying thank you guys we got to read uh kazi's uh, message kazi had written us a message for both of us oh did, uh, did he read it i can't find it all right i'll find it for you okay. um kazi said um I have a question for both of you. Uh, knowing what you know now, is there anything you could, you would change in your respective careers or anything you would have done uh, differently or do you not think about anything like that? Appreciate you, Weza. LVP, you go first. Or do you want me to go first? Weza with the 10 bomb? Weza, I love you. Thank do you, you, thank do you. you know the answer? I know the answer for me. Okay, well, you go first then. Uh, I would change nothing. I don't, I, I don't think about it. I try not to think about it. And even when I do think about it, I wouldn't change a thing. Um, I've talked about it a bunch of my stream of like being like, man, like maybe I should have went to Call of Duty because I have a, definitely have a love for Call of Duty as well in terms of like trying to play professionally. Um, and obviously they're doing, you know, like they're, I mean, Halo still doing all right, but they're doing significantly better with the CDL and, you know, they have just that longevity factor. Um, I don't think about it differently on the very, 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 or I don't want to say I don't think about it. I wouldn't change anything because on the very corny, uh, cliche part of the conversation is that if it would lead to me not having the life, this has always been the way I've looked at it basically since like 2018 is if it would lead to me not having the life I have now, I wouldn't want it. So, um, couldn't couldn't change a thing uh, you know it's it's always the hypothetical of like hey you could have the same life you have now but you just be playing a different game it's like oh uh, maybe but it's just for me it's impossible to answer without knowing that you know i love i'm really happy with where i'm at professionally uh i mean personal life obviously you guys know speaks for itself on how how we feel and how i feel in particular um so yeah i just i just wouldn't change a thing about our lives you know i it's easy to look at it in I don't know what the word would be, but look at it from a different lens and be like, oh, maybe maybe a, this different game or, oh, should have done this, should have done that. But I just, you know, I try not, I try not, definitely try not to think about it too much. I probably feel the exact same way. I've been thinking about anything at all that I would change. Um, nothing really of significance, but if I could go back and do something from when Halo Infinite launched and how great that reception was, and then continue that <laughs> through. <laughs> I would change it, uh, but I'm pretty sure I need a Thanos gauntlet hand. What is it? A glove yeah. with all of the Infinity Stones yeah. in it to do that. So, <laughs> yeah, I think that that would be the only thing. Is like I, I wish like that that feeling of excitement, passion, like how well like, it was doing. So yeah. yeah, exactly. Like just it was such an amazing feeling, and I just want that back uh, consistently. Uh, throughout for everyone for everyone because i i feel it when i get up there i really do because i really enjoy what i do 
Um, but that's the only thing I would change um, about anything. The rest of it, pretty damn happy. Pretty damn. I would have listened. I would have listened to my dad, and I would have streamed more. I've said that. I said that in the past. Yeah. That's like the only thing I can. That's the only thing I can think of that isn't like. Not like life changing, but you know what I mean. Like it's the only thing where I'm like, oh yeah, I was wrong on that one. My dad used to be on my case all the time about streaming and like <laughs> everything back in the day, and I'd just be like, dad, like, oh, you don't get it. Like I'm just like I'm just wor- worried about winning or whatever. And then like Ninja yeah. like blew up, and I'm like, damn, like. <laughs> damn. <laughs> uh, no, hey, but listen, Ninja. I mean, like, and you, you know, Ninja is Ninja. Like he's got a his personality is him so you know i i I can't do stuff like that but yeah that's like the only thing i don't think of like career wise anything really different or i don't know you know where um i'm going from um kazi's uh message down question if we have missed any please re-put them in and keep re-putting them in for us just so we can see um but verb asks how do you feel about the addition of advanced controllers in the sport paddles you know compared to the old days of everyone playing on stock controllers uh, they allowed everyone to bridge the gap to claw players, mm. or are they good for the sport because we are now watching the highest level of competition gaming with these controllers? Um, that's for you. Yeah, so. I mean, like for me, selfishly, obviously, it doesn't particularly help me the most because I have been a claw player my entire life. Um, but on the flip side of it, like I think that they have made gaming more accessible and allow everyone to play at basically like an equal level. Um, so, you know, while some of it's like, Ooh, I wonder what would happen if, if that was never a thing or, you know, if that never happened, um, equally, I can appreciate the fact that, you know, like, like you kind of said, like you're just watching the highest level of competition. And, um, I definitely love that side of it, you know, and it's more, like I said, it's more, accessible and and there for everyone so yeah just you know i i don't i'm not annoyed about it or i don't know what the right word would be but you know i think i think overall it's been a good thing for gaming basically you know yeah i i appreciate the question that's an interesting one sure. hold it together mike <laughs> uh davix asks a really good one which i think is uh, i think this is really cool uh it's for you uh, thoughts on the mental difficulties to stay warm and locked in when you're in a winner's bracket waiting for games to unfold versus the opposite fighting exhaustion completing a loser's bracket run to finals because this is this is a really interesting question and i'll quickly just preface it before i hand it over to Peach. yeah there is like that shift of like you are cold you haven't been playing you've had three hours to wait and like there's only so much warming up you can do at a warm-up station compared to another team who may have just literally played two series. Yeah. And like considering if you if you think about it this way guys, it's like these boys scrim every night. Every night. Seven like usually like 17 games or just under. Every definitely, night. Definitely definitely so definitely they, under. <laughs> yeah. Cuz people don't play slayers cuz how long the scrims are. <laughs> I, no, I know. But sometimes sometimes it's like 12 games. Okay, let's call it 12. It's 12, it's 12, games. it's 12 minimum. Yeah, 12, 12 minimum, minimum, right? Yeah. Call it 12 minimum. Um, you know, you're telling me that they're going to be tired after two series back to back? No, they're not. They're not going to be tired at all. If anything, they're going to be more locked in. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's an interesting balance. And I'd like to hear from you because I think you've told me many times like how you feel about waiting. Yeah. And I know the type of player you are. It's not a great thing for you personally. Yeah. Do the rest of your team feel the same way, or do you think it actually goes player to player depending on what you know? I think it probably goes then? player to player to player i mean i would personally always rather be on the winner's bracket side um you know yeah you deal with a little bit of like fresh you like you know not frustration you deal with a little bit of like rustiness and not being warm but you know i think where you have that two series um two series buffer um can be a big you know it's just a big uh factor for for everyone so you know i think uh i think that I would always take the winner's bracket side just because it's the winner's bracket and you get two series to lose. Uh, you could stay rel- you could stay warm enough to where you can still play really high level and have that advantage. I'd be sweating. This is no offense to their, their format and you don't have to comment. I would be sweating as a competitor in Call of Duty where you get no advantage other than like one veto. Um, and 
it just blows my mind because the loser's bracket, from my perspective, I know you get a Vita, but the loser's bracket, from my perspective, can have such a big advantage because you could just go on an absolute heater and be just so warmed up, you know, and you don't have, again, you don't have that buffer um, of that second series if, God forbid, they they win the first series. So, yeah, um, for me, I would always take winner's bracket side, just advan- you know, advantage of... Of like I mentioned, it. yeah, I, I think I think the large well, I think the large majority would, but in Call of Duty they have it's a little bit of a uh, it's a bit different. Yeah, it's a bit different. Um, Mike, I didn't switch because of Infinite, or I didn't switch to Battles because of Infinite. I just I had them and I started playing other games like Apex and like crouch spamming was a big thing, so I switched to be able to crouch spam. That's basically all it was. Hey, honestly, same kind of thing in Infinite. Random side question. Sorry. <laughs> Um, I'm going to speed through this one. Uh, Corey Suon, uh, he says, my question is, if I went to a LAN event, do you guys have stations to where you can 1v1? And would you ever 1v1 a viewer at a LAN or do you not have time for that snake bite? I can already tell you, no time. Yeah. There is no time for that, unfortunately. When, especially like at a LAN, at a major that they've been practicing for, well, right now, months. Yeah, well, normally, <laughs> normally, yeah. To, there's never time, but even if there was a little bit of time, like that time is used to like reset, relax, like chill out a little bit, or even better yourself with your team, go over VODs, do whatever you're going to mm. do. Um, but at LAN events, like even when we, you know, we want to hang out with friends and family, like you, you can attest to this, but our family went to Worlds, barely saw them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we never saw them, really. they like, weren't. They were hardly there for from my perspective. They, they pass. They pass like pass us. At yeah. some point and be like, hey, and then I was like, oh god, yeah, you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> you know, like it's just it's it's really really hard. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, um. Yeah. Just. Yeah, that one's pretty simple. There's no way. I I don't want to like speak for you, Peter. No, right it's now. just you know it just is what it is. It's not it's not a bad. It, it's not even you yeah. speaking for me. It's just you just know how you just know how it goes. Um, at events there's just no time. They do like I think it would be cool. They used to do in um in uh MLG they did it was called like a combine where like then they would have pros go and like review amateur gameplay and you would like rate players funny enough like i know like tj did like tj was in it and got rated like super high i think it was by west i could be wrong which is really funny um i think stuff like that would be really fun to do but obviously like at an actual like major like now there's there's just no time it's you know it's even like my um you know we have a great community obviously over in my stream and people loads of people are going to the texas event uh we have three of them so you know all the texas events and uh you know we're we're trying to like come up with something to do and hang out whatever but i have to be like the lame old guy that's just like hey guys like listen i love you but i just i can't commit to 100% 100% like oh, I will go here or anything like that because with our schedule it, it, with our schedules do. it's it's such a quick yeah. jam-packed weekend um it's just it's impossible and I, like I love it because I love events but I also have moments of being like damn I wish I wish I was like the guy that would you know we talked about it right that balance like I wish sometimes I was the person that's like oh let me go hang out with with you know um my friends and go grab a go grab a drink you know whatever but i'm i'm just not like when i fi- when i finish our games every night it's like i go to i get food and go to bed and i have to be ready to play the yeah. next day you know straight up so 100 yeah. percent. um i'm gonna run through some uh more questions so i can get to the bottom uh astros asks me <laughs> what kind of practice goes into your role as a host and gamers you know gamers watch vods what's your equivalent kind of similar i mean a lot of vod watching as well uh, a lot of scrim watching. For me, it's taking notes, taking really, really good notes, organizing those notes, updating those notes. Um, I have multiple meetings with my producing team to talk about storylines, uh, where we want to go. All the the talent members jump on those calls and we talk in length about the direction that we want the broadcast to go, um, what are going to be some of the biggest kind of pieces that we want to mention um, and talk about heading into the land. So... There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. And, and in terms of like bettering myself as a host, yeah, just like watching watching what I do back, um, thinking about how I could handle a situation better or how I could, I don't know, improve my um, analytical game a little bit better. Uh, and often I lean on the boys for that because they're really, you know, incredibly knowledgeable. 
about the game, uh, as am I. Uh, I can happily say that now. I have watched so much Halo Infinite. I have broken down so much Halo Infinite. Uh, I'm very comfortable with my game knowledge, but when I want that next level, that higher level to understand something a little bit more of it on a deeper sense, uh, definitely lean on uh, the casters who are experts uh, on Halo Infinite. So yeah, it's just a lot of like reviewing, a lot of reviewing, thinking, note-taking, organizing. Uh, and staying up to date with everything that's happening. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next couple of questions as well. This is a really interesting one, actually. The Big Roo asks, what's harder, PJ? Becoming the best at Halo or staying at the top and keeping the want? What's, uh, can you repeat the question, sorry? Yeah, what is harder? Becoming, at the, becoming the best at Halo or staying at the top and keeping the want? Staying, staying at the top, 100%. Yeah, yeah, like keeping it, that motivation. Yeah, it's alive. just it's just one of those things. You, you just, I mean, I, it's so. I'm sure if you took the actual percentage, um, I'm sure it would be. I'm sure it would be actually becoming the best would be the hardest thing. Um, from my perspective, there's just been so many players and people and you know whatever that have uh, essentially made it to the top of professional play, but they couldn't maintain it. Um, so uh, yeah, that that would be my pick. I think I think staying at the top is inevitably hard, and you know you have to have your. Li it's so much of sorting out your life and figuring out your life and keeping that want, um, which you know, as we all know, it doesn't always make sense. But on the same token, it it just it's interesting how it works. Where um, yeah, I don't know. You just it, it, you just don't always. Um, I don't know what the word would be, but like you you just. You just, over time, like, you just fall off of how bad you want it. And, yeah, I just think it's not, I've never, ha I've never found it to be difficult for me, but I think that it is definitely something that is difficult for um, gamers in general. And I will say this, and this is not a dig at anyone, this is just my perspective of competitive gaming. Maybe you guys would agree with me, maybe you don't. As salaries have gotten higher in gaming, I think it's even harder for that want. Because before, the want was obviously you wanted to be at the top because you wanted to win and you wanted to be professional or you want to continue to be a professional player. But I think that nowadays, um, there are so many competitive gamers that are making a career that aren't necessarily winning. So even when you start winning, you know you can get away with not like you can get away with like you don't have to be a hundred percent all the time and you're still going to make an, this incredible living um again no digs at anybody but obviously i do think that, that plays a part of it a little bit as well makes sense yeah makes complete sense um mitch asks who is your favorite halo caster and why and considering there's only one in here right now <laughs> jersey <laughs> <laughs> easy <laughs> i just and i just yanked my head i was gonna say way. i was gonna say what the heck yeah, was easy, that easy shirzy um and uh, the reason why he is my favorite is because he is <laughs> no i put you on the spot i know i i do not have a favorite uh at all i love them all equally it'd be easy if like i was only like best friends with one of them but i'm literally best friends with every single one of them so. <laughs> It's uh, it's almost impossible to say, but just because Shirzy's in here <sighs> right now, Shirz, mate, it's you, babes. It's you, okay? It's you. Because uh, he lets me cast when he cuts grass, so I'm happy to do that. Um, there was another question down here. Where did I see it? Here we go. Verb asked, how hard was it for LVP to learn how to drive in the USA? In the UK, they drive on the right side of the road, and the steering wheel is on the other side of the car. Chills as well um it wasn't that hard verb and i'll tell you why because i literally got in the car and thought to myself well if i don't do this correctly i will die so I better verb, drive it's because she the right side. you're just she's just ridiculous at everything verb uh, it does it makes no sense to me if you try if i had to go and learn how to drive in the uk i would be an absolute mess um couldn't pr like i could do it but like given time i could do it she did it she literally had it within I, it was a, like a day like it wasn't it wasn't even a day and she had it and it was uh, i don't know i don't know i for the life of me it's one of those things i can't comprehend because i would it's i wouldn't be able to it's it's the, the, the final so you, do you think that if i 
started driving in the uk i would be fine because yeah, i would because you're like well if like, if i don't do this i'm gonna die goes into survival mode nah like. let me just tell you if we went to one of those roundabouts that you got over there in the uk we're <laughs> yeah. we're done like we're done for you have a couple roundabouts in new jersey they're then that shit crazy though not as many as the uk no though no i know but your roundabouts are actually like free-for-alls like <laughs> it's like weird like it, there's no sense to it it's just like if you see a gap and you think like the risk is low, just do it. Like yeah. it makes no sense. Like there is, there's no indication. There's no like the lanes are all messed up. Like it's so weird. Anyway, um, the big Roo asks, ha Lottie, how is it being the fiance of a pro gamer? Significant others all over the world can demand attention and love from their gamers. Is it hard with a pro gamer? Um, I would say it's it's like when can i stop getting the love and attention he is very affectionate um and loving all of the time uh but i understand <laughs> what you're saying in terms of you know like the significant amount of gaming that has to be done the scrims and stuff so i uh, this is a difficult one to ask um and you might this might be a better answer or i i would say a more realistic answer if i wasn't a gamer myself yeah <laughs> Or I wasn't it's the other way around. She's the one. She's the gaming. She's gaming her story yeah. mode games, and I lose her for a week. It, it is true. I probably <laughs> am worse than he is, <laughs> to be honest. Like honestly, it's that. It's that's why it's so difficult. Lots are lots of, lots starts a new game, and it's like, all right, babe, I'll see you. In, I'll see you in like a week or two. Yeah, dude. To be fair, sometimes. To be fair, sometimes you crush those games though. Oh, I know. No, I absolutely crush. I, I, I completely dishonored two in like two days. That's what I mean. So, hey. um, but no, I, I think you know it's. He has a great balance. You know, like he, he does, his, you know, his scrims, his streaming, his practice, his chess, his golf. Somehow <laughs> manages to get time to me as well. Mm. And I it, honestly, it's pretty incredible how he does it. But he. He makes me feel uh, a much higher priority than all of those things, which I think is, um, that's an art because I don't know how you do it, but you do. You do make me feel highly prioritized. Um, and we just have that type of relationship where it's really Aww. easy going and really like, it's like, it's hard to explain, but like if I want a game, he knows that there's nothing like shady behind it. He's not like, oh, she doesn't want to hang out with me. You know what I mean? It's like, he's like, oh, okay, cool. I'll do this or whatever. You know, it's, she knows that if I'm in a, on a heater on the chessboard, like just let me rock. I'm I got my win. My winds are flowing. Like, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, no worries, no worries. Like, you go for it. Go get your dubs. Oh, Knock those pawns off the board. Get that king. I don't know. I don't know. That's probably a really lame answer to your question, just because our dynamic is very different. Yeah, I think. Um, I think. I think the answer to the question is so difficult because we're very much the exact same where we both are in the same field and we both love gaming and games and i, I don't think it's uh i don't think it's a typical relationship where you have um yeah. obviously no offense to anybody but i don't think it's a typical relationship where you have kind of like the person i mentioned where you have the the get off the game scenario and yeah. you know oh you're not hanging out with me like why not like we game together we're playing a new game called like deceive inc and we're like gaming now geeking out over it so yeah. it's just um yeah you know it's nice when we can play something together too yeah uh which is really it's rare but it's really fun uh transcendent this is not a new podcast this is our podcast exclamation podcast exclamation podcast in the chat um got a lot of catching up to do apple podcast there's a lot of catching up yeah but we just thought we'd do a live one today because it's PJ's birthday. We want to talk to you guys. And to be honest, we have bloody amazing conversations yeah. when we're talking to you guys. Do you ask us questions that are just awesome. And Content. Talking. Thank you for the prime. Appreciate you. Major, 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 major conversations with you guys. Um, oh, I'm scrolling back up. Hold on. Where Brian, that's just okay. understandable. You know, like low on time. I mean, come on. Like <laughs> EF5 Albino. Uh, could be for both. Saw this on Twitter. If you had to take parts from three different games to form a perfect Halo game, what would it be? For example, maps from Halo something, starting weapons from Halo whatever, etc. It's a really interesting question, actually. What, what a great question. Oh, man, that's so difficult, though. Yeah. Um, maps from Halo... Did you go Halo 2? Maps from Halo 2? 
in a perfect world where like I think that it's gonna all work if that makes any sense. Maps from Halo 2, skill gap Halo 5. I'm missing one. I gotta think of one. Hold on. What would be what what would be like a good one here? I'm trying to think. I don't know what my third one would be. Oh man, it's gonna it's gonna <sighs> servers like H2. No, I, I'm trying to think of like online playing Halo has always been really really bad. Would you go sprint or not sprint? I'm not. I don't really mind either way when it comes to the sprint, no sprint. I'm trying to think. Movement. That's where I put like skill gap though. Like a skill gap Halo Five. It's not about movement. It's just in terms of like level of difficulty. I genuinely don't know what my third one would be. I'm gonna have to come back. I'm gonna have to come back to it. So you can you can start naming them if you want. You're gonna have to come back to it. I can't think of a third one. I, I literally can't think of one. What like a third thing to Im to put in? Yeah. Mm. I, what have you done first? Maps? You've done map? gap? Did you do maps? Yeah, maps. Maps, Halo 2. What about ranking system? Ranking system, Halo 2. Oh, Halo 2, okay. But uh, that's why I'm trying to think of like a different... I'm not trying to like name oh, sorry, two things that for... That was skill gaps? No, no. I, for for uh, maps, I said Halo 2. Skill right. gap, Halo 5. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um... Ranking system. Well, you you have to pick one other to make the perfect Halo. So I I don't know. I'm trying to think of it, but I'm trying to like I'm trying to name a different Halo than. What about starting weapon? <sighs> no, nah, but that goes with like skill gap stuff. I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of like another. I'm trying to think of like another mm. one. I'm trying to think of like a third thing that's like maybe from a different Halo. If that makes sense. Like I'm trying to not name something from Halo Two and something from Halo Five. You know. Do you guys have yeah. any in the chat? Sandbox H3. Yeah, you could go with that. You can go like Sandbox H3. I it's so difficult because I like I loop so much of this. If this makes any sense, I loop so much of the same into uh, one category. Like skill gap, I'd put Sandbox in. Um, like I go button combos. Yeah, I don't know. It's difficult. I'll leave it at those two. I think I'll leave it at those two for now, and I'll have to really Getting think of a third very one. Very dicey. Yeah. All very detailed in particular. Yeah. Good question though. It, it is a great thinking, question. It? It's a great question. Gets you really, really thinking. Um, John Matrix one one seven asked LVP. Are there any plans for you to guest host the LVT stream? Clutch's appearance during the uh, one of the last streams was great. If they asked me, yeah, I'd love to. Honestly, like if if they were up for it and they wanted to, then absolutely, I would love to do that. Um, but yeah, I I can't. I can't decide that. They have to decide that. But yeah, Clutch was amazing. It was lovely to hear his voice on the stream uh, and have him cast in again. So yeah, that would be really, really cool. Uh, let me see. Let me see some other questions. I don't know if I've missed any. If I have missed any, I'm so sorry. I got to wrap up soon, right? Yeah, we'll have to wrap up. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how. I, I, don't, know how, I don't. I don't know how long we um we stream like before. A long one. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Because it's a live one. It's different, you know. Yeah. Fair enough. Let me see. Hold on. Oh, someone asked art style of infinite. Did you do you like the art style of it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think I think it's nice. Yeah. I think it's colorful. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I well, I think it's definitely better because I forge. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, D Demi Z asks, not really a part of the game, but what about the scene, aka the teams you'd play against? That's a really good question. Like, if there were teams that you could take from different Halo titles and re um, be able to play them, like, now, what teams would it be? Um, I mean, it's, I, I don't know. I, I'd, I'd definitely, it's, I'd want to play EG again from uh h2a just because they kicked my ass too many times um fb is an obvious answer uh like oh not not oh seven not the oh seven one they, those guys you know like the actual like 3d uh ones that won a whole bunch um oh man i'm trying to think of any other good ones yeah like the h3 straight rip just like the obvious answers for sure 
Verb, I absolutely could. I absolutely could. That's the biggest lie. Verb said you can touch that I man, was, Roy, in H2A waiting. respectfully. That's a fucking lie, Verb, and you know it. Hey, they were nuts, though. They were nuts, though. But, I was waiting for you to see yeah, well, Epic Zero and Beth, thank you guys for the resubs. Um, yeah, I would just go with the obvious answers. Like, just not, not to be too bland, but, like, FB um, from, like, 05, um, you know, and prior uh carbon 2006 you know reach instinct again would be great to play against eg you know yeah a lot a lot of the you know h3 uh straight rip in the 2008 roster um with snipe down not neighbor sorry neighbor um yeah that's kind of it are right, you played against bth they really weren't much wes they really weren't much uh we held our own you know uh if you gave me like my team now and that you're it's just i'm not really worried about that you know to be fair, I'm not worried about any of them. So, but just to um, just to rile them up a little bit. It's always good to rile people up. Why not have a bit of fun? Keep them on their toes. Um, Fern asks Lottie, "Do you seek out opportunities in other esports often? I know you did the COD Bowl at CDL Raleigh. Um, any others you reach out to? Um, so." I don't actually often reach out to any esports, so they'll either come to my agency and ask um, for to hire me, and then we'll go from there and I'll either accept the work or not accept the work. Um, but with COD, I'll usually do anything to do with COD. If COD approach and they, they want to talk to me about working with them, I'll usually always do that. And But other esports, I don't tend to do. And the only reason that is, is because when I am accepting work or I'm doing a job, I want to make sure that I am giving 110% to that role. Um, and usually that means knowing exactly what the hell I'm talking about. So if I don't know a game very well and I don't have ample time to learn that game and to get it to a point where I feel comfortable really analyzing and, and giving the right information and detail across to the viewers on the broadcast, then I will not be taking that work. Uh, mm. There's no... Like the money doesn't sway me. It's like no, I, I can't. I love I love that about I love like that. I love I that about you. Hard. I love that about you, you. Even though like it might mean. Yeah, I just think it's. Not uh, up a check. I just think it's um. <laughs> you know, I think you know the way that I look at it and look at gaming and look at just like the scene overall and stuff. And I I just I really admire that about you. And I just you know obviously I think that a lot of people would, you know. And it's not even a negative to them, but a lot of people would do the opposite where they would, um, you know, where they would work any, anything. Um, so yeah, I just, I, I've always appreciated that about you for sure. You know that. Oh, that's very sweet. I, I think, I, I think it's, that. I think it's admirable that you just will only do it if it's your full focus. Yeah. Dave, David's making me laugh. <laughs> Someone said, who's the lady chat, which is a totally a fair question. <laughs> David said, no one knows. She was delivering mail and he asked to hop <laughs> on the podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was delivering mail and I was just like, you know what? You need to guess? I'll come on. Six, let's be honest. We would, it, you say take a few <laughs> games. Let's not, let's, you're being, come on. We all know. What it. I will say though, if you are, if you are asking who I am, you clearly don't come in here very often. That's true. I'm just saying, like, that's not me guessing myself up, but like, I, I do feel like, like it is pretty known that we are a couple i do feel like that you know um but that's, that was funny that is cute am i missing i'm probably i'm missing loads of questions to be fair uh um 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 let me see let me see oh here we go oh yeah this is a good one tesla tom for the PJ, who do you think influenced your halo career the most whether it be a player coach or someone outside of the scene uh, who do you think influenced you the most? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I like in gaming, I really wouldn't have anyone in particular. Uh, oh, man, it's such a tough question because like it, it, I've always said, it's just a hard question because of obviously becoming a pro player like really young. Um, outside of gaming, like in gaming, I would say like Wes impact me a lot even though he's in here and I hate to say it, um, but he took it really serious and he was like one of the first people I teamed with that took it like super, super serious and I always appreciated that and like changed my perspective. Uh, out of gaming, I don't, I don't really have any good answers. Like I saw, I mean, even, even saying you, like you're in gaming, like technically I met you through gaming. So um, I don't have any good answers, honestly, unfortunately. I, I like, 
Yeah, I don't know anything. I, anyone, <laughs> anyone to think of? Like, I'm trying to think of. Was there, was there a player that you were just like, damn, I really want to? You know. mm, no. Whether it's not like it doesn't have to be like be like them, but it's more like I want what they have. I want to win. I want to. Do, you know what I mean? Is there something that inspired you to be like, I'm really good, no matter what age you are. Yeah. Like I want that. Whatever that is that I see, you know, like whether it's you watching a team win something or win a tournament that you were at when you were doing FFA and doing pretty damn well when mm. you were a kid. You know, was there something that you looked at and you were like, damn, one day I want to be like that? Um, no. It doesn't have to be. No, not really. Greatness can just fall into your Yeah, lap. not really. I mean, I, I mean, I, I could give the obvious answer and say like, like watching people win like FB or something like that. But, you know, like, other, I mean, even that, I wouldn't say it was like a big like inspirational thing it was just like that's just what i want i just want to win you know so i i don't really look at like i don't really look at like them winning and think in my head like oh they made me want to be successful it's like no i just i've always wanted to be that so like in terms of like who you look up to for that i guess you can go with them but yeah not never like a big like looked up to moment yeah yeah that makes sense for sure. Um, did you get rid of that Banavader or no? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I couldn't see if it got rid of it or not. Um, let me see. What other thing? What other things? What other questions? I did see something. Um, uh, <laughs> what, what was the biggest thing that you think <sighs> you had to work on to improve at being a good caster? I think for me, it's it is like knowledge. I think like I think if you're if you're going to be a caster or a host or you know whatever it is to do with broadcast, I think that uh, clarity and the ability to speak well and clearly and with confidence is should be something that you just have really, and like, that will obviously come with time and it will age uh, better. However, like if you if that's something that doesn't come naturally to you, I would say that you're probably in the wrong field because you should want to be up there in front of the camera, uh, being confident, talking about something. Uh, but I think what makes you a really good caster or host or broadcaster is knowledge and passion about said thing you're talking about. Um, those two things for me, if you can improve your knowledge, that's always going to be key and better and you will be noticed more and you will excel. Uh, and then passion, I think, just comes with time. Like, the better you get, the more passionate you get. Um, so, yeah, I think those two things are uh, the biggest improvements. I was laughing at sure. I was laughing at what Wes said, by the way, when you started talking. I wasn't laughing at you. I was laughing at Wes saying he just he just yelled at some 15-year-olds. That's basically, know, that's basically, what, that's basically <laughs> what he did. <laughs> I know you're not laughing at me. Don't worry. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, I absolutely know that. Wes screaming at 15-year-old me, you can't be getting <laughs> juked! just stuck out in my head forever <laughs> <laughs> i'm just looking for other um questions i think i've missed a couple someone's asking how your b-day is saichi he said hello it's your b-day happy b happy birthday what's up saichi it is your birthday it is happy it birthday is to sb the snake bite um <laughs> did you see what david said no, what did David say? Snake bite. Now is your chance to put the rumors to rest once and for all. Who gave slash received the swirlies? Your Jay. Jay was receiving the swirlies. I saved him. I saved him. Um, we've yeah. been friends ever since. Not by my wish, but you know, just one of those things. What am I gonna do? Not be friends with the guy after I saved his life? I mean, of course I'm gonna stay friends with him. You know. Botta, um, appreciate the birthday wishes. For yeah, thank you, huge. thank you guys for all the birthday, uh, birthday wishes. And, uh, Much appreciated. Yes. Vota, the uh, VOD will be on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. So don't you worry. You can catch up. You can absolutely catch up. I appreciate you guys uh, all tuning in and coming in here and everything. We we love it. We appreciate it. I'm going to answer a couple more questions, but when we hit the two-hour mark, I think we'll probably call it. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be a hell of a long upload. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here all night. Yep. <laughs> oh, Saichi asked, anything you're looking forward to after retirement? Oh, that's a good one. Um, anything you're looking forward to after retirement? Damn. I think there's a. I think there's like a couple things um to look forward to. Like for me specifically, I'm just looking forward to having like new goals. Um, as 
as cliche as uh, as that might sound. I'm just looking forward to having new goals and new interests and new things to pursue and new things to try to conquer. Um, you know, in gaming, I feel like it's playing a lot of golf as well, right, Mason? Uh, that's for sure. But no, I I think uh I think just having new things to want to achieve and want to succeed at um is something I'm looking forward to. Just because I've been doing this a long time, so I think from from my perspective, I've just been doing in in a good way a lot of the same things over and over and over and over again um so yeah just i think uh looking forward to a whole lot of golf and new uh new passions you know love that yeah love that i'm looking forward to seeing what those are um mezabiz i apologize if there was this was already asked you don't have to apologize ever homie uh, I'm a little late to the party, but PJ, what was your first event like for you? How did you do and how did you first get involved in competing? While you ask that, I'm just going to quickly make sure the dogs don't need to go pee. One second. Uh, first event uh, for me was... One second. Let me uh, go and remove this for LV Pizzle. Um, first event for me was 2006 um, playoffs. I was 11 years old. Uh, I was very, very fortunate. I, I've talked about it a few times, so I'll, I'll keep it short for everyone who's obviously heard it. But I was very fortunate. I did really well my first event. Uh, made it. I only played in the FFA. Obviously, I didn't have a team. I made it all the way to the sixth round in the FFA. Um, and, you know, my parents at the time uh, took me. You know, no one knew what competitive gaming really was. So it was just fortunate for me where I did so well in my first event that my parents were like, you know, really kind of bought in early on to, to believing you know, I don't want to say they didn't always believe in me, but you know, no one knew, no one knew what it was. So, first event, 2006 um, playoffs, sixth round FFA. So overall, really well. I think I'm in the top like 50 of individuals out of like oh well over a thousand. So yeah, I did really good my first event. And then, like I've always said, just fortunate that I think my parents just just bought in and and understood early on that um, you know I, I had. Uh, a talent you know that i can that maybe they encourage them to help me continue to pursue my camera's back on right now but i can't see it yeah i gotta uh you went rogue on me i, I could have just turned your camera off that's all i got oh. there you go should be back oh huh? okay gotcha I got you. Parents not bought in. Well, 2006, like, no one knew what, like, gaming was, like, at all. So when I say they weren't bought in, it's like, they're like, you want to go, like, well, you know what I mean? It's like, they're just like, you want to go, you want to go where? Like, what, like, what? You know, like, it's, it's such a, uh, such a bizarre timeline. Which is funny, because, like, a lot of people nowadays won't even, like, won't get that you know like you guys will like we have a, a little bit of an older community at halo where you guys will understand like hey gaming hasn't always been this big thing you know um so yeah my parents at the time were just like you know they just see me put loads of time in the in the halo 2 at 11 years old and they, they were always like really you know they never like tried to stop me playing or anything like that but i think uh i think that event specifically you know they they were like oh damn this is this is a real deal kind of thing, you know, and they got to, they got to experience the community and everything. And they really appreciated that for sure. So Chardrom asks Snakebite, can we hear how the love story began? Yes, Snakebite. Let's hear how the love story began. The, the, the love story. We've already talked, we've talked about this so many times. You want me to repeat it for you? Go on. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to. We met in 2018. <laughs> the love it story sunny, the love story started day. earlier for me than it did for you because i i was i fell in love the second i saw you and you know that for an absolute fact apparently apparently he saw that halo is having a new host and this is uh thor i began hosting 2018 while well, i was i was interviewing at the seattle worlds and then i began hosting 2018 new orleans that's when i first ever desk hosted mm -hmm. and apparently halo was it the interview post or was it was it the new orleans one What's that? When you when you started having a little peek at my Twitter, <laughs> I think it'd be I think it would have been Worlds. It definitely it worlds. no, you know it would have been Worlds because and this is oh yeah because I called you yeah and this is another thing too where <laughs> she just she just had me right away because In a lot choke yeah a <laughs> uh, lot um you know I, like we didn't know each other at the time at all no. um you know like you guys know how serious I take gaming and how serious I take my career and everything and lot um 
you know, you were fairly new to Halo at the time, um, from my perspective, obviously. Um, and yeah, I don't, I'd only done like last chance yeah, qualifiers you, yeah. in the UK, in the UK, for the Europe Halo scene, yeah. And um, Lot was, you know, working this world's event, and she asked to get on a call and talk to me about like. You know, just stuff going on in game in uh in Halo and like I asked such basic questions. Well, like, but I like, I, I, like oh, I just remember like being like No, I know. <laughs> but like they were like, they were basic What's your favorite as a team? What's your favorite like, I think that's good combo? I think that's good stuff. What are you guys the best at? What are you guys the worst at? I'm yeah, like, but oh I think God. that's I think that's good stuff to, that's like you're know, you're roasting so, you're roasting so, yourself, but that's all like good stuff to know. No, I that's know. all that's all good stuff. You're being way too you're being way too harsh on yourself. Um but no, like yeah, so like you she literally did that and I thought I was right away like really, really I don't say like interested, but I intrigued at like how serious you were taking your job. And I thought like, I just was like, wow, that's like really, really cool. Not that like other people don't do that, but I mean, Hey, at the end of the day, I've been doing this a long time. And it was the first that anyone's ever asked to talk to me and literally just said, Hey, how are scrims going? You know, just, I think it's a little bit different now, um, per se. Cause I think that we have halo data hive and people are tracking scrims all the time and everything. But, um, yeah, just, uh, it's funny. It's funny looking back on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shirzy. Shirzy goes, Young Lot is portrayed as kind of sassy, low key, no cap, kind of cap. Kind of cap. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, not sassy at all. I'm probably more sassy now. Um, I was a timid little thing until you gave me a microphone. And then as soon as I had a microphone, it was as if, like, I was this confident bubble of energy. Um, I literally brought out the most personality out of Shotzi to ever been seen at that point at the time he's got way more, he's got way more personality now no, obviously I know now, he's, a, he's, a, he's, time, he's gotten older he he literally told me like before the interview like at worlds he was like i'm so nervous like i just yeah. i suck at this stuff i was like shotzi don't worry about it like you and me we're gonna have a conversation it's gonna be chill fun it's like forget about the camera just look at me don't even look at the lens and he had a great interview so i think I was, uh, I was dead happy with that yeah I think I think that's a great another great thing that you are able to do. Just like it's just like it's just it's so many people when it comes to interviews, like so many players when it comes to interviews, like it they just get they like hype it up too much in their head, you know, rather than do exactly what you said where you're like, Don't don't worry about yeah. the camera, like we're just gonna have a conversation well, and like, I, I think best, that's such a such a good way to outline yeah. it for people, you know. The best bit of advice that I gave him, which I think still stands right now, but he turned to me and said, What if I don't answer something right? And I said to him, I was like, Shotzi, I was like, the best part about this whole, th this whole conversation, this whole interview is that like, you only know the answers to what <laughs> yeah. I'm asking. I was like, no one else knows the answers yeah. to what you're asking. This is not a test. Like, I'm asking you something and you, it's just about you. Yeah. That's it. Like, it, no one would know other than you. So even if you gave, an, like, you know, you slipped up and you said something that's actually not true, no one would know. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. And he was like, oh, yeah. Can't, like, you, yeah. Can't, you can't give a wrong answer. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. You can't give, a, you can't give yeah. a wrong answer at all. So, yeah, it was, that's an interesting one. I don't think there's any other questions I can see at the moment, unless I've missed any. Um, yeah, I think we're pretty much caught up. When I you think so. <laughs> historic one. <laughs> I mean, it's a good time. It's a good time to call it anyway, because we're gonna have a uh, a long upload to go that probably won't be ready until midnight tonight anyway. That is very, very true. Very true. I have um, a super question. Uh, how did you roll two and Frosty Leaf come together? Saichi, I've talked about this so many times, but the long story short is that uh, Matt and I have been teaming a long time. Um, this is a very generic answer, so I would encourage you to go look at previous. Uh, podcasts or you know whatever to to kind of actually get like the long version of the story but basically um you know matt and i have been teaming since 2011 um we stuck through kind of through all the years and then when halo 5 came out we decided to pick up frosty he was like a young talent we decided to pick him up and then we were pretty much one and two with uh eg at the time and eg were kind of having some personal problems and like we can kind of see that and we decided to um we decided to ask Lethal to join our team. And TJ kind of took a leap, you know, just took a leap and decided to join us, uh, even though he was on a five-time winning roster, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, yeah, and that's kind of that's how, we, how we started teaming. Like I said, very short answer to a long story, but um, gives the same perspective regardless. 
It does indeed. I love how David is in here. Like, I think it's on episode thirty-four. I'm like, that's my man. Podcast. <laughs> that is uh, that's impressive. Yeah. Let's go, sure, David. This has been so cool. Like being able to talk to you guys and you know all the questions. Like we didn't even <laughs> any of the pre-planned topics. That no, we had. yeah, we, we did. didn't talk but about. We'll save yeah, it. Okay, we'll save, we'll, it. We'll, we'll save like what happened in the two K for the next. next well, week we'll have the final. We'll get. Yeah, we'll yeah. actually get <laughs> the results of the whole thing yeah. by then. Anyway, so. We also are yeah. planning on thank you Trey Trey. Uh, we also are planning on at some point. I think I mentioned this in a previous podcast. I always say that um, of doing some interviews um, with people, interviews and having just guests. Uh, having guests. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. So, if you are a fan of the podcast and you have any suggestions, um, you know, I'm, I'm saying this. For you guys in the stream, but also obviously for those of you who are watching on YouTube, listen to Spotify, uh, make sure to tweet us. Tweet us or post in the comment section um, and let us know if you'd like anyone specific. We have a whole bunch of people uh, that we know that we want to talk to, um, but, you know, obviously interested to hear if you guys have any as well. Indeed. And I am 90% sure that Shirzy and his wonderful fiance are coming to stay with us at some point this year. So we'll get an in-person podcast appearance from Shirzy one just saying so make sure you guys are let me talk to Shirzy. let me talk to Shirzy too let me that's the real guy i gotta talk to <sighs> don't be like that <laughs> don't be like that uh but anyway guys <laughs> we really appreciate all of the conversations the love the support the subs coming in thank you so much um it's his birthday he's the birthday boy um uh we love you peach happy thank birthday, you babe. i appreciate it i appreciate it and guys happy thank birthday. you uh thank you for everyone who has tweeted at me obviously thank you guys for watching um live and, uh, and not live uh but thank you for all the messages we've gotten loads of messages of happy birthdays in the chat sorry we haven't read every single one we're trying to do a mix of both of doing the show and also um doing the live stream so thank you guys for the questions thank you for all the birthday wishes i do appreciate it thank you thank you thank you thank you amazing stuff well thank you so much we're not writing a coffee today because we just have one as a treat uh, but next week we'll talk about all of the results from the 2k uh, talk about what happens and break everything down and if you do have any further questions please do leave them in the comments on the vod of this live stream and we will get to them in the next episode but thank you guys so much for tuning in i hope you guys have an amazing rest of your week and as always stay on the grind <laughs> peace <laughs> later guys